This is the story of how one game captured the hearts and minds of an entire generation of players. This Not is me, the of story course. of Super Mario Brothers 3. Hey, look at that. Although An old concept of Bowser's uh, Bowser's Power. room. You can see the door right here. Are you saying they, they were like, hey, maybe there's donut blocks? That's also interesting too, because the brick, the brick tile work is like pretty close to the same here. It's pretty crazy. It's a type of game that is easily approachable for younger inexperienced players, but can also be played by experienced hardcores without getting tired of it, said Miyamoto. What? People are gonna get tired of Mario games so fast. This game, I'm only gonna play Mario R &D 3 4 for like began a brainstorming a long narrow. Look at their practice tools, man. That's so sick. Like ROM hacking Mario 3 isn't even this good, I don't think. I mean, it's still pretty good, but like, fuck. It looks like they can just do whatever they want. Like, it's so crazy. Programmers took the sheets of graph paper and programmed map data. Designers had to wait a whole day before seeing their creation on screen. And even then, there were plenty of bugs to work out. Like, look at that. The frog suit let Mario jump higher and swim faster, but he slowed down when using the suit on land. Do you actually jump higher in the frog suit? I don't think so. Okay, Mario just jumps exactly that height. One pixel higher? Yeah, right. No way it's higher. You guys are cracked out of your mind. The eyes on the frog suit are not Mario's hitbox. Look. See? Mario will move when his hitbox gets touched, right? Like this, watch. See how I move there? So the jump, like right here, you can see I'm not jumping any higher. You probably read in an interview from Nintendo that said that the frog suit jumps higher. It's probably somebody at Nintendo said it. That's all, I'm just investigating. Okay, the frog suit, I think, jumps higher at base speed of 40, right? And when Mario gets to 40 and then I jump, I don't really get close to the cloud here. Look at this. Look at that. I think he jumps higher with a base speed of 40. Yeah. So standing still, no, but at their base speed of 40, I think the frog suit jumps a little higher. But anyways. At one point, someone pitched the idea of Mario turning into a centaur. It got rejected. <laughs> Do you think Miyamoto has ever heard of Mitch Flower Power before? Like the name? Do you think anyone ever at Nintendo has ever brought it up? Ever? Anything like that? I'm just curious. I'm, I'm not trying to be lame about it, but like if, if anyone's ever, I don't think he has. Video previews of the game debuted in September of 1988. What is this level? Players wouldn't have to wait long to try it out themselves. You guys see what they did here? They put an unbreakable block here so that the shell could bounce back in this section, but they don't really do that in the actual game. They would use like a coin block or something else, an unbreakable block, just like a brown coin block. So do you think that they don't have the brown coin blocks yet? You know, some blocks like these right here are coin blocks, right? Do you think they didn't have that yet? It would take more than a year for the game to reach North America. Europe had to wait almost three years. Has anyone title. ever thought about the cover of Super Mario Bros? Like, think about what's going on. Mario's like in the middle of a wall jump, shooting a fireball inside the wall. That doesn't even happen. Is that lava down there? Like, I don't know what... I've never understood the cover of Mario Bros. Is he wall jumping? And he has the orange hair going? What were they thinking? That wall is the background? Well, it looks like bricks that you break. It's an extremely weird game cover. Nintendo of America's product analysis manager, Howard Phillips, who reviewed new games from Japan, had famously rejected the Japanese version of Super Mario Brothers 2. I think that was an incredibly smart move. One of the most powerful decisions in the gaming industry in America by far, right? I would have hated if I had the original Mario 2, the Famicom Mario 2, with my already natural like annoyance for video games whenever I lose, 
I, it would have drove me crazy. I would have been a very angry child. But then Mario 2 USA was like glorious and colorful and way more positive. But I think that was a big good decision. Game. So Nintendo swapped out the characters of Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic with Mario and Friends and released it as Super Mario Brothers 2 in North America and Europe. Look at how annoying that mother is right there. She is so mad about what she has to do for this kid right here. Mario saved this kid's life, but Mario ruined this woman's life. There's two perspectives of Mario. She is the standing example of, you don't need a Super Nintendo, you already have a Nintendo. The entire electronics industry suffered a chip shortage. Prices skyrocketed. Nintendo was hit hard. And because Nintendo controlled all manufacturing, companies were notified that they would be getting fewer cartridges than initially ordered. Some stores took advantage, increasing game prices to $70 each. What? It sounds like we've never reduced the price from the chip shortage from, from that moment. Once people started selling video games for 70 bucks, that's it. People are like, games are 70 bucks now. Games are still, I just bought Resident Evil 4 with the DLC, it was 70 bucks almost. I'm just saying the price itself, the actual number. I'm not saying the worth and the value. Not true, $59.99 was $360. Oh, sorry for the $10 difference. Um, I apologize. Right, guys, you don't have to explain inflation. Like, that is a massive, it goes without saying. Right, I grew up in Canada, so my numeric value of the price of great games that I saw were always around 60 to 70 bucks. I'm also, I'm kind of shocked games aren't more more expensive too. Cause I mean, it's only costing more and more to make these games, it's, it's crazy. You remember seeing Mario 64 for $99.99 in Canada? See, I told you guys, everyone who lives in Canada is saying that what I'm saying is true. But everyone who lives in America is like, that's not true, that didn't happen. Everything that happens in America is the same everywhere else in the world, Mitch. 90s was a very wild time for prices, yeah. Regardless, this documentary is amazing and I love watching this. This is, re this is really fun. All right, let's get back to it. When a reporter asked Peter Main, Nintendo of America's vice president of marketing, what they were doing about the shortage. This guy looks like he understands and plays a lot of video games. He looks like, yeah, he's a gamer. Look at him. He looks like somebody who knows how to make money off of video games. The speckled Roy Koopa got his name from Roy Orbison. Iggy Koopa? Punk star Iggy Pop. Morton Koopa Jr. struck Brooks as a wise guy, so he named the character after the talk show host, Morton Downey Jr. As for Larry Koopa, that name just seemed like a good fit. <laughs> Meanwhile, oh, industry insiders wonder. That's like, yeah, if, if parents have seven kids, by the seventh, they just don't care anymore. They're like, whatever his name is, I don't know. So what I don't understand is how does a chip shortage happen? It's just ev everything was bought up so fast that they're just, they need time, right? Well, I know supply and demand. I'm trying to think. I know it's supply. They would spend 1989 teasing the game and building a $25 million advertising campaign. Yo, look at the car. Look at the Adventure of Link, Zelda 2. Although there were far fewer Play Choice 10s than Nintendo Entertainment Systems. Fucking scrub, you see that? He fell right in the water. Noob, noob ass bitch. You can jump, get P speed, get the tunnel. Super Mario Brothers 3! He's a Mario sayer. Super Mario? Don't know how I feel about that. Dear Santa, I want TurboGrafx-16 keyboard, Power Glove, the whole collection of Ninja Turtles, the Game Boy and Super Mario Land and Super Mario Brothers 3 and Marvel. What the fuck, man? Ask for one game. Greedy ass bastard. Yeah, what? I want Nintendo Power Glove, a lot of money. <laughs> what? A lot of money, a lot of video games, a remote control race car. I want a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Marvel Madness. And I want Game Boy and I want Mario 3s. Ben Hooker, you'll be doing a lot of hooking if you want to afford that shit. On Christmas, I will leave you some cookies in my living room on a little table. I would like a new bike. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. There you go, Lauren knows how to do it. I bet she got a bike and a Game Boy. Can you imagine the parents being like, fuck. Oh man, I don't think we're raising Ben. Oh, I love this. This is true. On the back of the copy of Mario 3, the original copy, World 1 is different. Yeah, there's no second mushroom house and the pathway, right? Look at the pathway right here. There's no pathway. This should be over here. 
And I don't know what level this is on the bottom. And this is on the official box of Mario 3. The overworld doesn't say Mario down here. If you go to the game, it says World 1. I got a Mario box right here. Look, you see? See what I mean? On the official... There it is, see? Official copy of Mario 3 right there. And then this level, that's no level that exists. By March, 700,000 copies had been sold. Nintendo of America unleashed their... Are you telling me they almost sold a million copies within a month? They could have sold more if they had more copies, but they didn't. If they had a million copies of Mario 3, they would have sold a million copies of Mario 3 within a month. That is insane. Yeah, but you have to remember, now you stay at home and learn about everything on TikTok. Back then, you would just wake up in the morning and go to your game store. You have to remember, in the 80s and 90s, kids had a lot more free range to go do stuff. Commercials aired on TV. Right, bros. There were cross promotions with other companies. Sega had just launched their 16-bit Sega Genesis. And after the success of the PC Engine in Japan, NEC brought it over to North America as the TurboGrafx-16. Yeah, we know about the TurboGraph because some kid asked for that with a Game Boy and a Power Glove and Ninja Turtles all together. Kids bragged about how far they could get in the game. What? What just happened? Did that kid actually just wall jump? What the fuck? Did you guys see that? You actually thought I'd miss that gaming historian. The kid literally came out of the pipe and wall jump. I didn't even think you could have enough momentum. I don't think what I saw is real. All right, check this out. We're gonna slow it down. Look what this kid does out of the pipe, okay? Check this out. Kids. What? Right Double jump. He's got the hammer suit. Had to have been Game Genie. Nintendo Power put out their first full strategy guide. I have that. It's right here. Super Mario. Look at this beautiful wonder. It's a very good condition, too. Bad boy condition. Look at that. Look at that nice, sexy condition. Oh, yeah. Boom. I got it all. See that? Jump on some claws. I got the level. Daring do on donut lips. That's a good toilet read. One group of adult fans <laughs> loved the game so much, they ported it to the PC and sent it to Nintendo, hoping to secure a license. Nope. Nintendo was impressed, but declined the offer. That didn't phase the team of John Carmack, John Romero, Tom Hall, and Adrian Carmack. And the following year, they formed a company, the makers of Wolfenstein 3D and Doom. What? I didn't know, how many people did not know that? The people who made Doom were inspired by Mario 3. You're welcome, Doom community. You see that? We all work together. In 1991, they surpassed Toyota as Japan's most successful company. Mario 3 beat Toyota. Can you imagine Toyota having a business meeting and be like, we got fucking beat by Mario. Get your shit together, guys. We gotta make better shit. What a game. AVGN SMB3 is classic, but you guys want to watch the AVGN SMB3? I just like when AVGN's like, yeah, but this game kicks your fucking ass. Mario 3 is hard. I'm gonna review a good game for once. <laughs> what the hell is this shit? I don't care what these people are talking about. Oh, look back there. What game is this? <laughs> Who the hell are you? Go back to the freaking Wonder Years, you piece of shit. This game kicks your ass till diarrhea comes out your dick. The only thing better than playing this Wait, game hold on. Is what boss room is this? World 4 Boom Boom. What the fuck boss room is this? It's not 441. There's no ledge there, is there? I just don't know where AVGN got that footage for Mario 3. Cancel AVGN for fake footage. So I know it's not this fortress, but just to double check, right? So it's obviously, look, it's obviously not this one. So the only other left one is this fortress. There's no other boom boom battles in this world. Can you imagine there's a platform there and I just don't remember? I had no idea there was a platform here. I thought it was an empty open room. No way. That's crazy. Well, I'm so used to just running in, running through there, right? There's eight worlds. In the eighth world, there's five spaces you can stand on where giant hands drag you down to your doom. There's 12 tanks you gotta jump on before the goal. And it takes me 12 jumps to get Bowser to fall down the hole. The eighth letter of the alphabet is H, five equals E, 12 equals L. What's that spell? Hell! Your mother. Oh my God. 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 Oh my God
I don't know how I feel about this part. Your mother sucks cocks in hell. There it is, Ripe Rose. No wonder, it's a copy of Ripe Rose. So Mario 3 turned into the devil. This is like the nerdiest fucking thing I've ever seen. This is it right here. All right, who wants some? Motherfucker! What is this? This is like peak, yeah, peak 2012. Congratulations, you've killed everyone.